Hi guys, right, today I'm going to show you how to do a 3D D20 dice and a little 3D book. So if you want to see how I did it, keep watching. Right, so I'm starting off with a clear bead of acrylic. You can see in the background I've got my reference because I wanted to get all the facets correct. Like I think when you're doing something like this, it's really important that it doesn't look stupid. So I'm just sort of like patting down the shapes roughly with the flat of my brush. Um, if, if you pat it in every, you know, if you get all your patting areas correct and you're making all the flat areas flat where they should be flat, then your shapes will come together, if that makes sense, because that's how they just intersect. So you don't have to worry about making triangles all over the place. You just make flat sides in the right place and that creates your triangles for you. Um, obviously with a brush, you're not gonna get them perfectly straight, so there will be some filing required. But I decided to do, I wanted to do the D20 kind of like, you know, like you get those sort of resin, crystally kind of pastel D20s. So I decided to give it a clear base and then I'm doing a, a very light wash of colour over the top and then I'm going to put some more clear on top of that and refine the shape a bit further just so it sort of encapsulates this colour um, so I'm going ahead and doing that now so I'll just get my clear but oh yeah and I put some um, iridescent glitter in as well just cause you know just cause you can why, why wouldn't you so yeah so then I'm just going to encapsulate that I think I don't even know if I encapsulate it to be fair I can't remember it's been that long yeah here we go so yeah so I'm just encapsulating that in a bit of a bit more clear as well this is why I end up quite large I should have made it smaller originally but this is bigger than I wanted it but I am kind of glad that I did it big because I couldn't, wouldn't have fit the numbers on it if it were any smaller I don't think but yeah so just sort of keep patting it like look at your reference and decide what angle the the plane's on and just pat it flat if you can um, and then all the little shapes and things just make themselves if that makes sense you can like just sort of refine them a little bit you're gonna come in with your file anyway and um, refine them a little bit further because as long as you keep your file straight and you've got it on the angle that you actually want it to create then it's really easy to get it basically perfect I was really surprised at how easy this was because it looks like it's hella hard but it actually wasn't it was quite good I enjoyed doing it I'll definitely do them again so yeah, so I'm just filling up any like flat, you know, any like dips where it's not quite flat and um, making sure that the peripheral shape on the edges is correct um, because obviously the pattern flat ain't going to create that edge shape because it'll just sort of blob out. So I'm just sort of scooping around the edges, making sure it's right, just filling up any bits that are dipped because as you pattern with it being a brush not something hard you kind of make a little dip in the middle a little bit so just come in with a little bit of a wet bead to fill those up and just make sure that you don't like go over your corners and stuff so yeah but it's yeah like I said it's actually really easy um it will loads easier than expected I'm just sort of like making sure that there's no dips making sure that the towards the edges it's actually sharp towards where I want the corners and just keep patting away and then like I say I'm going to come back in with my file so I'm just checking it from all angles as well making sure that it don't look goofy probably would have been a bit easier to see if it had been a coloured acrylic to be fair it's like doing it in clear is nice result but it makes it a little bit harder so that's something to think about if it's your first go I mean don't get me wrong this one my first go but I never do all the easy way do you know what I mean yeah, I faff with it quite a bit, just getting it right, you know, making sure it's perfect. So I was determined that it wasn't going to look terrible. I was like, nope, I'm not going to make it look goofy, it's going to look great. So I sat faffing with it a bit. And then once it's fully dry, we'll come in with my file. So I'll come back when we get onto the filing because I'm going to keep faffing with it, I think. Make sure that you don't get any round your edges as well, you know, like any sort of like stray bits of acrylic on the actual nail that you don't want. Make sure you get that off before it dries. I've top coated this before I put this on so that it will actually come off. But yeah, I'll come back when we start filing because um, I'm going to be faffing with this, I think. Right, 
Oh no, I must have lost the footage of me filing. I just basically very lightly went over with a file um, on, on the flat surfaces, like kept it perfectly aligned. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. I thought I had that footage, but obviously not. Um, but yeah, I only barely filed it a tiny little bit. I did most of my work with the brush. Um, and then just like where there was a flat, just ran my file over it like three times just to make sure it was perfect. Just make sure that you don't whip your file. You know, you don't like file it in a curve like you would a nail. You've got to make sure it's perfectly flat. Just do it super slow. Concentrate on making it flat where you want it flat, you know. Um, and then I'm coming in and I'm just I'm just putting a bit of a sort of like highlight, if you like, on the edge of all the things just so it stands out. With it being clear, it doesn't actually show a... Um, like the corners very well especially with it being matte as well obviously i am going to top coat it but i will lose a little bit of sharpness when i top coat so i just want to make sure that that's in there visually you know what i mean so i'm just highlighting those edges and i'm going to do like a little outline as well to separate from the nail with it being clear as well obviously if you're doing it in like black or something you wouldn't need to do that but just to pick out those edges and make sure that they're visually stand out And then I'll go ahead and add some numbers, which was a pain in the backside, because this is so small. I'm trying to do a two, honestly. Obviously, she had to roll a 20. So I tried to do a 20. Any curved like numbers are just so hard at this scale. Really annoying. So I started again with that one. I decided it was too far to the right. So I just used a bit of water on my brush to like scrub it off a bit. Started further over. Make sure you leave room, guys. Proper preparation and all that. But yeah, if you need to, just do it in tiny little blobs and just sort of generally make the shape of a number. Just what I do and then just sort of like push it in. It'd probably be a little bit easier in gel to be fair, because it'll flow a bit better. I've switched to gel since this, because I'm sick of like paint drying on my brush. It's not funny. Had my fill. So yeah, and just find a, if you want to do a certain number on top, find a picture of it, and then you can see what direction the other numbers are facing and what which face they're on, you know. Because, you know, they don't all face the same direction and they're not in, they're not in a, like a one, two, three order. They're in like a specific order for how, just how they make them. So you've got to bear that in mind. You want to get them in the right order, otherwise it's going to look silly. And you want them having the fa face in the right direction. You don't just want to do them all facing like up the finger because that just looks stupid. Yeah, definitely work from a reference or have a D20 in front of you or whatever. Or, you know, whatever die you're doing. Very intricate work, as you can see. <laughs> Don't be afraid to move your client around as well. Like if you need to get to the side, or you need to do it from, you know, from upside down or something, just move them. They'd rather move than have crappy nails. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm still quite impressed with this. Normally, like when I do some work, I like hit it about 10 minutes later, but I was actually really happy with this uh, die. I think it looked really good. And if I did it again, I'd do it exactly the same. Normally, I'm like, oh, well, I'd do this different, or if I did it again, it'd look great. And I actually do really like how it came out, and I would do it exactly the same. Obviously, I'd try some different things, like do some different colours and stuff, but I don't think I'd change any of the technique. I'm really happy with how it came out.
if any of you guys in the um, you know in YouTube land ever try it, I would absolutely love to see them. You can um, tag me on Instagram or whatever. I would absolutely love to see people's attempts. And if you ever want feedback, just tag me and I'll give you feedback. You know, no drop, no problems. Be prepared for the truth though, because I won't lie, I tell you that. <laughs> so, be warned. Yeah, I'm just doing this little book now. We decided it was uh, Barbie's first Necronomicon, just because her character's fabulous and you need a little Barbie Necronomicon. But this is my first time ever doing a book and it didn't come out great, it was all right, you know what I mean? It came out pretty decent. Um, this I would change my technique, I'd probably, I don't know, I don't know what I'd do different, but I'd do something different. I think I'd probably build it in layers so that I did the inside pages as an actual layer rather than trying to blob them on the side. Um, so I'd do like the inside page colour first and then do an overlay of the book, like the binding, if that makes sense, so that it's all the way through. So I'd probably do it like that, make it like a little sandwich. But yeah, you just basically block it out into a square and pat it flat. It's nice and easy, you know, there's not really much to it. You can make a little, like, ridge, like a little gully down for the spine, you know, where the spine is on the side. And just try and make it so that it's roughly the right shape. You see, I tried to make a gully for my white, you know, for my pages. And I'm not, I don't think I'd do that again. Decided to make the spine stand out a little bit more. Yeah, you basically lay your flat shape, get it all like flattish, make it properly hexagonal or whatever. I decided it, need, it were gonna have like a little like strap around it, you know, like a little bit of a leather string or whatever that would dangle down. So I just done a really thin like, I just basically used like a sort of medium consistency acrylic bead and just sort of like run my brush down either side of it to stretch it basically, to stretch it into a little noodle. And then I think I put some glitter on it or I do like a little like, um, I can't remember what you call them, the uh, pentagrams, that's it. I do a little pentagram on front and then put some glitter on the top coat, I think. I think I use a little, some metal shapes as well to make some little like metal corners, but I don't think I'd bother doing that again. They were a bit too big. But yeah, if you are going to top coat them like I do, bear in mind that you need your top coat to be quite thin um, because it will, you will lose a lot of detail. If you don't want to top coat but you want them glossy, then you can use glue, you know, like nail glue. I just put it on and it has a satin finish when it dries, but make sure that you do not touch the glue while it's wet or get it wet or get any oil on it or anything like that because it goes white and it looks disgusting. Um, so yeah, I tried to stick these little metal bits on with acrylic and they were a pain in the backside, I wish I hadn't bothered. Just because if it's not square, it's just gonna look terrible. So I had to get perfect, it would just drive me up the wall. And I put a little like gem on it, I think, or I don't know, maybe put a gem on the end of the string. It's been quite some time. They all stayed on fine, but I just didn't like how it looked, so I wish I hadn't bothered. But yeah, I think if I were to do this again as well, I would also glitter first, then put my pentagram on, because I think it got lost, to be fair, because the glitter was a little bit more opaque than I thought it was. It was like an iridescent, but I thought it was, um, I didn't realise it was so opaque, you know, it kind of covered the painting that I'd done. But I'd spent ages getting a nice little pentagram on it, you know what I mean? Oi, never mind. Yeah, I think I'm just going to let you watch the rest of this video now because it's all pretty standard. Um, if you uh, enjoyed it, please pop a like on it. And if you want to see any more videos from me, like I say, I've been, I don't know if you've watched my old videos, but I've been getting progressively better and I've been really, really grinding my art style and making, you know, making progress. So if you want to, you know, see how I'm coming along and maybe get some tips along the way, then watch this space. I'm thinking about doing like a, a proper art sort of playlist, you know, like how to do portraits and things like that obviously don't judge me by this one um because like i said i've got a lot better 
Uh, but yeah, check my Instagram out if you want to see what I'm about. Um, I've been doing a lot of portraits and stuff on there and a bit, a bit more like realism and things like that. So yeah, but if you fancy seeing how I'm getting on and, you know, maybe coming on my little journey with me, then, you know, subscribe and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.